Welcome to the Math 2203 video on subspaces. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to define subspaces over real and complex vector spaces. Uh, we'll take a look at the subspace test and we'll see lots of examples. Consider a non-empty subset of a vector space V. We're going to call that subset W. If W ends up being a vector space under the addition and the scalar multiplication that we've defined for V, then W is called a subspace of V. Just a couple of extra notes in regards to the previous definition. When you are denoting subspaces, you may use one of the following two notations. Um, both of those are ways of showing that W is a subspace of our vector space V. If the scalar multiplication in your vector space is defined for real numbers, then W is going to be called a real subspace. If the scalar numbers that you're using in your vector space are complex, then W is going to be called a complex subspace. What I want to do next is I want to prove a really nice property of subspaces of vector spaces. And that is that every subspace that you encounter definitely is going to contain at least the zero vector. So how do we prove something like this? Uh, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to take an element from our subspace W. I'm going to call that element small w. So let w be a vector inside of our subspace. Remember that the definition of subspace means that it's actually a vector space under the same addition and scalar multiplication that we have in V. That means if we were to scalar multiply our element w by minus 1, it's still going to be inside of our subspace. Because w is also a vector space, we can perform addition, the same addition that's defined in our vector space v. What we're interested in doing is we're actually interested in adding together these two elements, w and minus w. And when we add together these two elements, we end up with the zero vector. And this is true for any subspace. This leads us to our first example, and that is the zero subspace. Uh, the zero subspace is a subspace of every single vector space V. It only contains one element. It only contains the uh, zero vector. And we can do addition, we can do scalar multiplication. It's all going to stay inside that subspace. So this subspace is closed under addition. It's closed under scalar multiplication. In fact, it's going to satisfy all of those 10 axioms. But the zero space by itself is kind of boring. What we usually want to do is we want to find what are called proper subspaces. These are subspaces somewhere in between the zero space and the vector space V. To find these kinds of subspaces, what we usually do is we select some good looking subsets of V and we use the subspace test. This is the subspace test. If we take a subset of a vector space V, then W is going to be a subspace if the following three conditions hold. The first one is W is non-empty. What we usually do for the first one is we show that the zero vector is inside of W. The second condition is W has to be closed under addition. This is the addition that W inherits from the vector space V. And finally, the third property is that W is closed under the scalar multiplication. And again, that's the scalar multiplication that W gets from the vector space V. So let's jump right into it with an example. What we're going to do is we're going to consider the real vector space P2. So remember, that's the set of all of, all of the polynomials of degree 2 or less. Um, we're going to put those polynomials in terms of T. What we want to do is we would like to figure out whether or not this set, W, um, so again, it contains all of the polynomials of degree 2 or less, but we have a special condition. We have the condition that this number b must be equal to 2 times the third number c. And we want to see if this subset forms a subspace of our vector space v. So the first step is to check and see whether or not the zero vector is inside of w. This is going to show that w is not empty. In our case, we don't have a vector, we actually have a polynomial. So what we're going to do is we're going to check whether or not the zero polynomial is inside of W. 
zero polynomial, it's just zero. So this means we have coefficient a equal to zero, we have the coefficient b equal to zero, and we have our number also equal to zero. So here's a, here's b, and here's c. Now, does the zero polynomial satisfy that special condition that we had from earlier? Is b equal to 2c? Yeah, of course it is. If we were to put in b equals to zero, and c is equal to zero, we can see that this condition is definitely satisfied. So the zero polynomial is inside of our subset w. This means that w is non-empty. Next, what we want to do is we would like to show that w is closed under the addition from the vector space P2. What we usually do first in this step is we set up two elements that are inside of our potential subspace w. So I'm going to let P1 and P2 be polynomials inside of W. If these two polynomials are in W, they have to satisfy that condition that was given at the start of the question. Well, for P1, it's going to be that B1 is equal to two C1s. And for P2, it's going to be that B2 equals two C1s. This is really important. We're going to have to use that later in the question. Now, here comes the fun part. The addition in P2 is the usual addition of polynomials. So we can go ahead and we can sum up P1 and P2, and this is what we're going to get. So this is P1 here, this is P2, and all I'm going to do is collect like terms. What we want to check is we want to check whether or not this sum or this polynomial down here is actually inside of W. And to do that, we need to see if that condition is satisfied. Well, remember that the condition is that this coefficient here must be twice this. So we need that B1 plus B2 is equal to 2 C1 plus C2. Now, do you remember that blue box that I gave you earlier? We're going to use that here. So remember that B1 was equal to two C1s. That's because P1 is inside that set W. Also, B2 was equal to two C2s. That's because the polynomial P2 is inside of W as well. And we can factor this out and we get two C1 plus C2. So this condition is satisfied and we have the W is closed under addition. And finally, we'll move on to step three. Step three is checking that your set W is closed under scalar multiplication. In this case, the scalar multiplication is the usual multiplication by a real number. Um, so it's just distributing that real number through the polynomial. So again, we're gonna start with some polynomial that's inside W. Let's take P1 again. Remember that if P1 is inside of W, then we have the following relationship. We have that B1 must be equal to two C1s. Now what we want to do is we want to multiply by a scalar. So what happens if we do some multiplication K times P1? So in this case, K is going to be our real number. So just k times our polynomial a1 t squared b1 t c1 and we can distribute the k through this is just the usual scalar multiplication and we're going to get an expression that looks like this now remember what we want to check is we want to check whether or not this is inside that set w so this polynomial down here has to satisfy that condition that this coefficient here is twice this coefficient. So let's see if that's the case. 
So we're going to start with k times b1. Do you remember what b1 was equal to before? Well, we can rewrite b1 as twice c1. Now, we do a little bit of rearranging. We get 2 times k c1s. And this is exactly that coefficient that we had before. So that condition is satisfied. We do have that k v1 is equal to 2 k c1s. So we have that w is non-empty. We have w is closed under addition of v. And we have w is closed under scalar multiplication of v. Well, if all three of those things happen to be true, by the subspace test, we're allowed to conclude that w is, in fact, a subspace of v. What I want to give you next is an example showing you where the subspace test might fail. If any one of those three conditions is not satisfied, then w is not a subspace. So, for example, consider the following set. We have a set of vectors where we have the first two components are complex numbers and the last component is always equal to 1. That the zero vector of C3 looks like this. It is a vector that has three zeros in it. Notice that the last component is not equal to 1. And we need that last component to be equal to 1 in order for the vector to be inside of W. So we have that the zero vector is not inside of W. Well, we've seen a theorem that says that the zero vector is always in every single subspace. So because the zero vector is not in W, W cannot be a subspace of V. So last example of the video here, we're going to determine whether or not this subset of two by two matrices um, where the 1, 1 entry always has to be greater than or equal to 0 is a subspace of the real vector space M22R. Step 3 is where everything is going to fall apart. So let's take the same A1 that we had in step 2. We know that A1 must be greater than or equal to 0. But what happens when we multiply this matrix by minus 2? So remember that scalar multiplication is the usual scalar multiplication. So I'm just going to multiply all of these entries by minus 2. And do you see the problem that just happened? So what happened here? Well, the problem is when we go to look at this first entry here, it's not going to be greater than or equal to 0. Right? That's what we want to check. We want to see if this is greater than or equal to 0, but A1 is greater than or equal to 0. So when we multiply by minus 2, we get something that's less than or equal to 0. So we have the W is not closed under scalar multiplication. So because W fails step number 3 in the subspace test, it's not going to be a subspace of V.